from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School. And with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Michael Bush. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first are Dorothy Fenton and her daughter Darlene from Peterborough, Ontario, in memory of Donald, loving husband and father, and Donna McLarty, loving daughter and sister, on the third anniversary of their passing, and for the return of young people to their faith. The second is an anonymous donor from Lakeland, Florida, for her intentions. Our thanks to our donors for this gift of the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. King Melchizedek of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham as he was returning from defeating the kings and blessed him. And to Abraham, and to him Abraham apportioned one-tenth of everything. His name, in the first place, means king of righteousness. Next, he is also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but resembling the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. It is even more obvious when another priest arises resembling, resembling Melchizedek, one who has become a priest, not through a legal requirement concerning physical descent, but through the power of indestructible life. For it is attested of him, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. The Pharisees watched Jesus to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And Jesus said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. Then he said to the Pharisees, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. Jesus looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against Jesus, how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. In our Gospel today, we find Jesus in the synagogue on the Sabbath. There he encounters a man who was crippled with a withered hand. The Gospel also tells us that the Pharisees were watching, and they wanted to see what Jesus would do when he encountered this man. In fact, they may have brought this man to the temple on purpose, just to see what Jesus would do. They saw themselves as judges of the truth. They sat in the front row of the synagogue, pointing out errors in other people while promoting themselves as self-righteous protectors of the law. On this particular day, they were not in the synagogue to worship, but to watch. With closed minds and hard hearts and clenched fists, they were looking for ways to trap Jesus. Now Jesus could see into their hearts and he was very disturbed by what he saw. And so he calls the man with the withered hand forward and looking directly at the Pharisees, he asks the man, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath to save a life or to kill? Now they knew the answer to his question but they remained silent. Jesus was grieved at the hardness of their hearts. They knew every letter of the law, but they had forgotten what true worship means. Their minds and hearts were set on their own way, not on God's way. In fact, their hands were clenched in anger, and they were even more useless than the poor man with the withered hand. Now this hardness of heart is the same problem for some of us, just as it was for the Pharisees. We often sit in judgment of others, especially those who do not pray the way we do, or follow the laws of the church as closely as we do, or who act and look differently than we do. No matter what good someone does, we don't trust them especially if what they are doing makes us look bad. We look for something bad that we can hold against them. So we can be just as judgmental as the Pharisees. Our closed minds and hard hearts and clenched fists make us unwilling and unable to see God at work in the world around us. Henry Nouwen tells the story of an elderly woman in a psychiatric center who was acting wildly, swinging at everyone and everything in sight. She was such a danger to herself and others that they had to take everything away from her. Her last possession was a coin, which she gripped tightly in her closed fist. She grasped that coin as if being deprived of it would mean that she would lose her very self. She was afraid that if she lost that coin, she would have nothing and be nothing. Like the Pharisees, she clung to her own idea of salvation. She believed in the coin and in her own strength to keep her safe. Jesus wants to open our tightly clenched fists, and he asks us to give up our preconceived notions of what makes us good but we are creatures of habit. We still feel it's safer to cling to what we know rather than to open ourselves up and trust in a new way of doing things. 
With clenched fists, we hold tightly to all our wrong ideas about God, other people, and ourselves. When we are challenged, we cling to resentment and anger so tightly that we make ourselves blind and cannot feel God's presence. We refuse to let go and let Jesus show us another way. So we continue to put our faith in our own well-established practices. We hold on to our comfortable routines. And like the Pharisees, we sit in the front pew of our churches, judging others who are not like us, because it makes us feel less vulnerable. We hold on to things that can only defeat us, complacency, self-sufficiency, resentment, and the belief that we can pray ourselves into heaven without the help from anyone else. But the truth is, we are unable to worship, unable to pray, unable to be the children of God that we were meant to be without the help of Jesus. We hear Jesus say to us, stretch out your hand, and we panic. We will do anything but that. We are afraid to let our false treasures go for fear of what will happen if we really did open up our hearts and our hands to God. Stretching out your hand would mean letting go of those things around which we have built our lives. The man with the withered hand took a chance to be vulnerable and he was healed. The Pharisees could not accept the changes and the challenges that Jesus' teaching caused them. So they went on blaming and judging others whose path to God challenged their own rigid interpretation of worship. It's hard to depend on God instead of just yourself. It's hard to risk making a fool of yourself by surrendering to God in front of others who are so harsh, judgmental, and condemning. But it is the only way to experience new life. So let go of yesterday's worthless coins. Jesus has real treasure to give. All you have to do is open your hand to God. Let us now open our hearts in thankful praise to God for the healing grace his son is offering us. For all those in the daily TV mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer book intentions, especially those asking for peace in their family, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That God will be our guide and our strength as we let go of our own ideas of holiness and let Jesus guide us in his way, we pray to the Lord. Lord that firmly rooted in the presence of Christ, we will find positive ways to serve God and our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That we may offer the Lord's prayer today with a sincere and open heart, seeking to do God's will, and so gain entry into the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That the souls of the faithful departed find peace in the presence of Christ our Savior. We pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, help us to open our hearts to you and with open hands be a loving witness of Christ's love and forgiveness to others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Oh God, bless we see the gifts we offer you with humble, contrite hearts. Lord, watch me in my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer by St. Claude la Colombière? Jesus, I feel within me a great desire to please you, but at the same time, I feel totally incapable of doing this without your special light and help, which I can expect only from you. Accomplish your will within me, even in spite of me. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for prayers are included in our Prayer Intentions book. Let us pray together as a community. Dear God, give me ears to listen to your small, soft voice saying, Come to me, you who are overburdened, and I will give you rest. To order our daily TV Mass prayer book and CD, call us at 1-888-383-6277.